Hello, my name is Mitchell Pearson, and in this video, we're going to be taking another look at Azure Data Factory. Specifically, I want to take a look at how do we iterate over an array and make our data set dynamic so it's able to pull the information from the current item that we're iterating over so that we can process that data in some way. Maybe we load it into a database, maybe we load it into a data warehouse, maybe we move it. Maybe we've processed it already, but we just want to archive that file off somewhere, so we move it to an archive destination somewhere. How do we do that? This can be a little bit tricky, but in the next few minutes in this video, we're going to tackle this subject. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do is we're just going to start from a pipeline that we've created in a previous video. So right here, I have filter underscore for each. And just a quick kind of level setting here, right? The get metadata activity is connecting to a blob storage account that I have and it's retrieving an array that has a list of all of the items in that storage account. The filter activity is reading right here. It is reading from that array, and then I have a filter that says if it belongs, or if it begins rather with this string, then return it equals true. If it does not match this string input, if it does not, not match this value of input imp, then go ahead and remove it from the array. And the filter activity then will output its own array. So it outputs a new array, which we're reading in with the for each activity. If you go right here, let's see where settings are. There we go. And so this is reading an array as well, but it's the output from the filter activity, which now excludes that bad file or those bad files from that original metadata activity. Now, inside of the for each activity, we have a essentially an activity that I've already brought in here. I'm gonna delete this guy, we don't need it. And what we're going to do instead is we're going to replace this with, that's gonna be all the way up here. It's in its own little category of move and transform. We're going to replace it with a copy data activity. Now, once again, if I really wanted to drag this out, I could spend some time creating a table in my Azure SQL database and just copying the data, loading it directly in there. It's a very, very simple process. Just takes a little bit more time to kind of create those connections. What I'm gonna do instead is pretend like we've already processed the data. Maybe we had a data flow, right? So we have a data flow activity that we've created that's processing the data, cleaning it up, manipulating it, and then loading it into the database. And then after that's done, we then want to archive. We wanna move and delete those files. So we archive those files off somewhere. So that's what we're gonna kind of simulate here. The copy data activity is going to need a source and it's going to need a destination. Here's the tricky part. Those need to be dynamic. So I can't just create a data set that points to an individual file. We need to create a data set that is going to point to whatever the item is that we're currently iterating over. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this one right here. I have a data set here called Azure, ADLS underscore file underscore employee. And if you look at the connection information, it's pointing directly to one of those files that are in my storage account. And so I'm gonna replace that with the dynamic value that we're iterating over. Keep in mind that the cool thing about this data set is that we've already gotten the schema. We've already imported the schema, so we have that available. So we don't have to import that. We're gonna go back to connection and let's go ahead and replace input imp right here with our dynamic content. And that's gonna be at curly bracket, item, open, close parenthesis, dot name, curly bracket. Now, this is the same thing if you think about it that we've used in the past, but we just used it directly as a value we passed into a stored procedure, not to set the connection, the data set itself to actually be dynamic, which is what we're setting up right here in this video. So that is actually correct. What I am going to do, that's not correct because I wanted to make a copy of that data set. Dang it. All right. I'm gonna fix it. Uh, da, 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 da. So let me go and browse out here real quick and just grab the right, I wanted to make a copy uh, so you can kind of see how to do that. It's a very simple process, but what I would normally do is not that. What I would actually do instead is I would come over here and clone that source. So I'm gonna clone that source. Now we have a destination. Now this one, I'm actually gonna name a little bit different. So I'm gonna get rid of file here. And I'm gonna say, all right, this is an Azure Data Lake account. And I'm gonna put in here uh, dynamic. I wanted to know that this is a dynamic connection. So Azure ADLS dynamic employee. All right, so it's a little bit different than my other ones. 
Uh, the connection here, this is where I'm gonna go ahead and change this real quick. So same exact thing I did before, at curly bracket item dot, oh, open and close parenthesis dot name, closing curly bracket. Now that one is done. I'm very happy with that one. But now we need the destination as well. Remember the destination has to be dynamic. So we wanna get the name and we wanna load the name of that file into our destination, but that has to go essentially to a different directory location, right? So what I'm gonna do here to keep this super easy, super quick, is I'm gonna make a copy of that data set again. Uh, so we're gonna grab this data set right here. Go ahead and clone that guy. There we go, we got another copy. And then, you know, it probably would make more sense instead of having a file name here, Let's see, I would call this something like archive, right? So dynamic archive, because we're gonna be putting this into an archive folder directory. And so that'll be our destination here. We'll get rid of uh, YouTube. Let's just give this a different name. We'll just, now this doesn't exist. I don't have, by the way, if you come take a look at my storage account, I only have a single container here called YouTube. I don't have one called archive. This is going to just create it for me on the fly because I've referenced it here. And then it's going to put the, that's going to be the name of the file. Now, if you wanted to be more dynamic here, we could go into add dynamic content like we've done before, and we could start building out that name, maybe appending the date to the end or something like that. So we're not going to do that. We're going to keep on going here. If this is set up correctly, then what we're doing right now, let's go find this, is we're going to copy the data to the archive. Now that's not it. The next thing that we want to do is once we've copied it to the destination, we want to delete it from the original source. And so we are going to bring in a new activity here called delete. And with that delete activity, let's go ahead and set it up real quick. The source is going to be the dyna dynamic source, right? So we are going to grab the dynamic employee right here. That's gonna be, I probably could have named these a little bit better, uh, just kind of doing this on the fly here to show you how to reference these. But that's gonna be our data source. And everything else actually looks good here. So it's gonna grab that and it's just going to go and delete it. Uh, let's see what logging settings are. Do we wanna enable logging? Select your, I don't wanna enable logging, turn that off, there we go. All right, so this is going to, once it's successfully, so it's very important that we use a successful completion. If we wanted this to be a failure or a completion or a skip, we could choose a different path right here. We would just click on that button. But the success is the default and that's exactly what we want. So. If we've set this up correctly, this is going to run. Um, dun, 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 source data set is required in copy data activity one, 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 one. Where is this copy data activity at? Oh, we never set it up. Whoops. All right, let's set it up. We created the data set, so this is the easy part. This is gonna be our data source. It's going to be dynamic employee. The sync right here is going to be the dynamic archive. So that sync stands for destination. We're gonna pull it from the source, load it to the destination, very simple. If we were pulling this, you know, maybe putting this into an Azure data warehouse, an Azure data, um, Azure SQL database, maybe we wanna map the data, make sure everything is mapping correctly. Uh, but if we take a look at this, everything looks good. Just make sure there's nothing else we need to set up. All right, let's try this again. So the little validation window warned me and said, hey, if you run this, it's gonna fail. We're not even going to let you attempt this. So what should happen here is the get metadata activity gets all the files that exist. The filter activity gets rid of the CSV file. The for each activity is then going to perform whatever activities we have set up and configured, which in this case is going to be copying that file to a new location and then deleting that file. So we'll go ahead and refresh. It looks like, it looks like it's done. We're gonna to have to check this out. So if I go back over here, and I, let's go ahead and refresh this guy. We refresh it, we should have a new container that exists here. Let's see. Taking a little too long to load there. There we go. So you'll notice we have a new container here. If I click on the archive container, it should have all of our files here. And if we go back, let's go back to containers here. If we click on that original YouTube, the next step here was to delete those. And it did, the only file that remained was the one that we ignored with that filter activity. So in this demo, we took a look at something that is not necessarily super intuitive or super easy to set up and configure, but we did it very easily by understanding that whenever you're working with an array, 
We need activities that allow us to work with those arrays. And that's exactly what the filter activity and then the for each activity allowed us to perform. Now there's one more thing I want to talk about, and I'll definitely be doing a video on this as well. Uh, I like to actually do some of my data movement with Azure Logic Apps. And so I'll use the web activity and I'll call a logic app that I've created and I'll pass in information from Data Factory there because there's so many more actions that are available than activities currently in Azure Data Factory. It's probably not the best idea necessarily to do a lot of your development over there to extend Data Factory capabilities because eventually this tool is going to have more and more and more of those activities. And so then long term, you might want to try to move that code back and do everything inside of Data Factory, or at least as much as you can. So that's definitely a consideration. But for now and today, I do a lot of my file movement activities using Azure Logic Apps because I love the flexibility. And then even doing notifications, sending emails, updating lists, all of that kind of stuff, you can easily call an Azure Logic App. Now, I'm not just telling you to tell you this. I'm telling you this because that's going to be another one of the videos that are on my channel. So make sure you keep an eye out for that. And if it's already been published, then go take a look. All right. Thank you for watching this video. Enjoy.